Hello everybody. Um, today I just finished picking up a donation of some uh, grid type power inverters and they don't work. In fact, one of them... <laughs> yeah. So, um, let's see what we got here. Ooh, a power cord. How nice. Um, let's take a look here. have. <clears throat> nice and dusty, just the way I like it. Got some dog hair on it. Yeah. There we go. Now it's all good. Uh, okay, this one no, it doesn't really smell smoked, but, you know, obviously it is or they wouldn't have handed it to me. So, I think these are the, uh, these are all Sun brand. Yeah, Sun 250Gs, and this one's the Sun 500G. So, <clears throat> these are common cheap grid ties. Um, and they're all 120 volt. Let's see, I think these are actually switchable. Yeah, these are the earlier models where you can switch them back and forth from 120 uh, to uh, 240. That's cool. But, uh, okay, so, first step, <clears throat> make sure I get my meter out. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have massive allergies, and you'll hear that throughout my videos. It's just life in my world. So, okay, so first thing, let's check their outputs and see if they're shorted. Um, I don't know if you can see that that far away. I suppose I could stick it right here. <clears throat> okay, we'll check the input and then check the output for obvious shorts. Um, generally, the FETs and stuff like this fail shorted. Okay, 1.1K one way and 3 meg the other. Looks like actually a good sign. 2 meg. 3.8 meg, okay. 3.8 meg. So at least on the DC side, although this one had 1.2k going one way and 3 meg the other, so these two act like they're perfectly good. This one might have a problem on the input side. <clears throat> Let's flip them around. That one's got to have something wrong with it, that middle one, because it's, <clears throat> it's rattling. Okay. No impedance there at all. Uh, five me six and five six meg and five six meg. So that one's open circuit. Well, what do you want to bet we have a pop fuse? Okay, so take out the trusty screwdriver and stop start popping this bad boy apart. rattling around had this inductor broken off and I don't necessarily see yeah I see a pretty good ding there so I'll look at this under the microscope and see if it can be uh, I mean if I unwind a winding or two it's not going to change much but see if anything else got dinged because this is just uh, bare copper that's been Basically, it's a varnish. Um, it's pretty hard, but it's not impervious to rattling around. So, um, that's that one. <clears throat> Let's see, I think it was this one that had the open AC, right? Okay. So that means that that one has probably got a dead, uh, an open fuse. <clears throat> Alright, um, as soon as I get all these sides taken off, uh, I'll come back. Alright, so I've got all the screws out. So the next step is these these FETs, diodes, whatever they are on each side here, is um, they're still kind of slightly glued to the heat sink. So I'm going to 
because the last thing you really want to do is tear this um, thermal interface material. It, what it does is its whole job is to keep the, met, the metal of the FET from, top, from touching this electrically, but to allow really good heat transfer. That's its whole lot in life. Because um, if this row of FETs was tied to this row of FETs, you'd have a dead short between the AC and DC sections for instance in this particular design. So, um, and there's a little thermal grease on them. I see that the thermal grease is actually, eh, no, it's on the fit and the, <coughs> and the insulator. <coughs> Excuse me while I grab a drink here. Okay, so, that takes out one side. I don't like doing this, but I'm not. Well, I have to do it. There's no way I can slide this board out without ripping those isolators here. Isolator, insulator, whatever. <clears throat> okay, so, is that it? Are we done? Yeah, we're done. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so one of them came with it. Let's take that one and put it back. They're fairly tough, but being that this is cheap Chinese construction, um, you do want to be careful. So that side is complete, that side's complete. Okay. I'm using an X-Acto with a busted off blade, so just be careful with it because it can still puncture the, the insulator. And here's all the hardware gathered neatly for... Alright, so now Let's see, this one was the one that had the open AC. Yeah. Okay, so that one has open AC. So the first thing we're going to look at is that fuse right there, that round PC board mounted fuse. Let's see, 10 bucks says it's or has it been used to this board yet? Uh, so I think it's right here. Test point 10. Hmm. Okay, so it's open. We have an open fuse. Alright, so that's pretty easy. Now there's another fuse, I think, is there not? Um, yeah, there's one right here. Blade style automotive. It can actually be removed and it's showing very low impedance, so it's in good shape. Okay, so the AC side of this thing popped, which tells me there's a bad FET somewhere or possibly a diode. <coughs> I guess this row over here is all D designators, D, uh, D30 something. I don't have my glasses on, 3940, etc. So we'll check those last. Um, let's see, uh, 3 meg. Two and a half meg, one something meg, and zero. So that FET right there is toasted. When these FETs die, um, all three pins basically short together, so it almost doesn't matter what what direction you want to take it in. Yeah, so that's okay. So that's all good. All right. Um, let's see. I'll be right back. <laughs>